Hey everybody, today I'm going to be bringing to you a little tips and tricks guide for running the any percent vanilla characters in Borderlands 2 here. Now, basically, I should go over how any percent works for Borderlands 2. So, typically, any percent is completing the game with no restrictions other than, you know, the base using the game only type stuff, etc, etc. So, but you might see a lot of people use Gage right here, which is a very, very common choice for a lot of people, mainly because of how easy and powerful she really is. But she is DLC, so what we have had to do in terms of categories and all stuff like that is we've had to separate both Gage and Krieg into their own separate categories called Any% percent with DLC, which allows any usage of DLC in any way. So that is basically what has happened overall. So basically these four vanilla characters right here are those that would qualify under any percent technically. So even though Gage is faster, she's a better run, etc, etc, this, this is something that you still have to deal with in general when choosing which category to run for this game. So basically this tips and tricks video is going to be for the starting point of of the any percent characters, not for those that start with any sorts of DLC. So, now, I'm going to be using Zero because Zero is the fastest of the other four characters and the least painful, even though he still has some shortcomings that really make him kind of difficult. So let's go ahead and start the game up and watch the first cutscene. Um, the first thing that we're going to be dealing with is the fact that, basically, there's a DLC that gives you all the gearbox starting weapons here at the start. And if you're on Steam, you can disable that to kind of speed this up by a couple seconds here or there. I haven't done it for this file, just because I want to show you what you can do if you haven't done that. Um, because there is a way around it that is allowable in-game. And that is something that is really worthwhile in doing for you. So once we gain control of our character, I'll show off exactly what you should do at the start of of your run if you don't disable the DLC. So basically what you're going to want to do is you'll see that I get this pop-up message here which is you know saying that you've got the Premier Club and you're getting all these gearbox weapons etc etc but these are all DLC weapons like I said and so we can't use them. So the first thing you want to do is take this Vault Hunter Relic and you're going to have to put it in your inventory because no matter what, that can't be dropped. You can't hit the drop key, etc, etc. I don't know why. You can't sell it, you can't do anything else like that because that will technically change everything. So eventually you just have to take it off, not use it, and then put it into your bank once you get to Sanctuary the first time. Or at least just hold it in your inventory and never sell it without buying it back. And then... But anyways, just drop all the gearbox weapons. You can do these just from the overworld if you're on PC, etc, etc. Just, but, you know, drop them whenever. And then just make sure your baddest rank turns off, like always. And then you basically have a start that is within the rule set of any percent. The reason we don't use those is because someone without that DLC would you know, not have that advantage, because it does save a massive amount of time for that to be used. And then, um, basically, the reason Gage can is because you can't have Gage and not have those weapons, and then Krieg is also lumped into that because, you know, he's a DLC character himself, so you're using DLC, so you may as well be able to use all DLC. That's kind of the reason behind all that. Um, you'll notice what I did there, like, during this section. It's not a very m major thing, but you want to run in front of Claptrap, because if you don't, if you wait too long, then he'll actually kind of freeze there for a little bit at, during each of his three little speeches there. 
So just a constantly running forward pretty much saves everything for you. But now here's going to be another tiny little difference that does affect the run in a very positive way for Zero. So you see what I did right here? Is I waited for Claptrap to start talking just a little bit right here. And then I'm just going to come over here and play this little echo. This echo spawns on the four vanilla characters, but does not spawn on any of the DLC characters. Playing it right here saves about 20 seconds and skips this claptrap monologue and just lets uh, Knuckle Dragger come right in. So, here we go. I play it, I exit out, and there we go. Cutscene starts. So, anytime you run a vanilla character, you can do that. It'll save you nice big 20 seconds. And then you're going to want to grab this pistol right here, which is a very important pistol because it's the only weapon you have. So there's a few techniques that are really important for um, how you use this weapon because it's all you have and you have to be able to optimize every little thing you can with it because it's only 11 damage, it's only got a 7 mag size, right? Yeah, 7 mag. It's not that great, <laughs> really and truly. It's not the gearbox sniper when it's a when it's got perfect parts and all that. So the first thing that is that I'm going to need to go over is the animation canceling that you can do with um, doll weapons. So basically, oh here, I'm I'm not gonna do the save quit right here. You would typically save quit when he well no I'm just gonna do it whatever doesn't matter I'll explain it after after this it's all right so typically in the speed run you sit here you hit save point and you sit just save quit and then just mash enter etc etc normal stuff whatever whatever so let's go over animation canceling here before I really trigger claptrap and start going forward. So basically, if you just look down the sights with uh, any dull weapon, it's going to be burst fire like this. And that's about as fast as it goes right there. That's, that's the maximum fire rate you, you get, pretty much. But, there's a different little technique that I like to use, especially if you have aim assist on, which is recommended for any sort of speedrunning for this game. You'll find that under gameplay right... No, it's... There we go. Keyboard and mouse. Aim assist. Make sure this is on for this uh, strategy because it helps so much if you're trying to be fast. So definitely turn that on. So basically what you're going to do is scope down, fire, and then unscope. So scope, fire, unscope. Really fast. It looks like that. And then you get some really, really fast um, shots off. You can really, really push how, uh, how many bullets you can get off in one little time frame. So another thing to think about is that on PC, there is drop reloading. So here in your key bindings, let's see, you have this drop weapon key right here. This is, this is again, PC only, but there is another way to do that in con on console as well, which I'll go over in just a second. So drop weapon right there is very important, because what you'll see is when I empty my clip, just like that, I can drop it and pick it up real fast, and it's fully reloaded. So that's one really quick way. Another way to do it is to open your menu, move it out, and then back in your inventory, and it'll do the exact same process. So that would be something to do on console, or if you don't feel like drop reloading or whatever. Those are the two different options. I would say drop reloading is the faster option for you, but menu reloading still works just fine. And draw and menu reloading is better if you have crit merges already, because that way you don't lose those crit merges, which is a very important glitch. So anyways, I'll kind of go through this first little part here to kind of show exactly what it's going to look like in the speedrun. 
and what you should be aiming for. It's probably not going to be perfect. It's been a little while since I've really touched on zero, but this is kind of the goal of what you're looking for, if nothing else, at least via the technique. So the first one spawns right here. You really want to see if you can kill him like that. Okay, that was... Oops. Not bad. Other than losing my gun for a second there. <laughs> Not bad. And basically, just try to know where every spawn is there. Don't go too fast, because actually, believe it or not, you can go too fast on that first fight, which is a big problem. And you may say, oh, but I've got this bad weapon. There's no way I could do that. I have done it once. You can soft lock that first fight by going too fast with this weapon right here. It's very hard, very rare, but it is possible. So beware of that even on zero, especially if you like the category enough to actually play it a lot. So here's another thing we're doing right here. We're getting a little bit of extra experience with these enemies here, but there's one little trick that's going to be about a five second time saver, give or take. So, once you've killed enough enemies right here, a brat will spawn. You don't want to kill him yet. Try to get him as low as possible without killing him. Just like that. And wait until the quest objective right in the map up here to shift before you actually end up killing him. Because this will make it so that another brat does not spawn. So right now. And then just abuse the uh, auto-aim. And everything else like that, just to kind of clear those out. It really is a good technique to really practice and get down with, um, with that right there. And then another little place where the run is going to be different is where you stand for the knuckle dragger fight. Because really and truly, knuckle dragger is not gonna go quickly at all for anybody you're not you don't have any crit merges like gauge wood or anything like that so you're gonna want to stand right behind this car right here the reason I say that is because knuckle dagger has three different patterns that he can give you one of two of which are acceptable and it kind of varies on which strats you're using so if you're sitting here with this weapon you're gonna want to be standing back here because the phases where he jumps at you or runs at you are really good. Well, the where if he throws rocks at you, it's very bad. It shifts if you're gauge, let's say, because you want him to run at you or just throw rocks, but you don't want him to jump at you because that's the slowest. And then if you're using snipers, you want him to sit there or run at you and not jump at you either. So I guess that's really the same. But anyways... um. The reason I say having him jump at you is very, very good is because he will actually clip into this car slightly and get stuck. So you really want to be standing back here. Even though the loot may fly the wrong way, this will still help you get a faster fight because it will probably prevent him from jumping up top. On top of the, uh, the barge up there, I guess. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll see what we get. Because your decisions and how you fight him will change slightly based on what you get. Okay, I've got bad RNG here, so I'm just kind of shooting him a little bit until he gives me something else. Alright, so that's kind of what you want to do, especially if you get bad RNG like that, because that was bad RNG, which is randomness, basically, for those of you that are curious. Um, basically, if he's throwing rocks at you, do not push him under half. Do not do it, because he will jump up and waste a ton of time, and just make your fight extremely hard. Wait until he gives you a better pattern. It's better to waste time waiting than anything else. So you can shoot him a little bit, but wait until 
Oh, uh, he moves away. And if he does run at you, also don't shoot him too fast and get him under half, or else he will turn around too quick. So you see I waited for him to be, you know, in this general area or something like that before I started pushing, like, shooting at him. And then this is where you're really going to notice if you're not great at the animation canceling or not, because it is very, very vital to doing high DPS right here if you can do it well and effectively and it also helps you get headshots with the aim assist because you can you're constantly forcing the game to go to center body mass on the enemies so that's the basic idea you want right there so now we just do the finish those up grab the eye and worry about claptrap because right now we're, that is that is just all you need for the first little section here, first uh, five, six minutes of the run. I will be going in a little bit more detail though. There is still more to do. That will be very useful information for anybody. So now, once you've gotten the dialogue up there, then you can come down and grab your pistol because your this Jacob's pistol is very very important to how much how quickly you do this next area the higher the damage the better um, basically the damage ranges from about 17 all the way up to 31 on this thing um, and the higher the better basically it's j obviously the more damage you do the faster you're gonna be but this is gonna be your main source of damage for the next you know, little while, unless you get a really good shotgun out of the chest, which is pretty rare. And this is another, this is a big point in the run where you're, it would be nice to know at least parts of shotguns and pistols, because, you know, knowing which guns are good and which ones are bad is very vital to uh, everything. It doesn't really change anything based on what you get, because, you know, it's already, you can't, you can't change the parts or anything, but it is still important to know. But this is going to be your main weapon here. You can drop this whatever, you don't need it. I don't like to waste the time in menuing it into my backpack, but if you want to sell it, you can. It's only worth 20 bucks. It's whatever. <laughs> but, an, um, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Network Dropping it's probably better. Or, or, I actually remember what I do now. I drop it in front of the chest and I pick up this shotgun, then I pick it up. But again, it's only 20 bucks, so it's fine. Alright. Pick up the shotgun. Talk to Clap Trap. And the reason I say you want to know shotgun parts is because... Basically, the only guns you're going to want to use are those with Jacob's grips right here. So you'll see right here I've got a TDR barrel, a Hyperion grip, and a Torg exhaust. The exhaust... or exhaust? Is this a rocket launcher? No. Stock. Excuse me. So basically, the stock doesn't matter. You don't really have to worry about it. Barrel, the only one that you will not want to run at all is the Hyperion barrel. It You can but only if it's Jacob's grip, and please God, know that you're probably going to be slowed down by it. So personally, the only ones I use are Jacob's grip anyways, so if it's a, if it's got a three, sh uh, three right here, basically, that's another way to know that on this starting gun. If it's got a three on the magazine size, it is guaranteed to be Jacob's grip, but, um, if you get a three-shot scattergun, which is this TDR barrel with that Jacob's grip, or a two-shot coach, which is a Jacob's grip with a Jacob's barrel, both of those are usable and worthwhile. Other than that, I'd say just sit here and drop it. Because it's about a second or two to actually menu it out of your inventory, and it's 30 bucks. Not a big deal. This away, so right there, another thing you're going to do is you're going to want to pause and make sure that Claptrap finishes talking before you run into this trigger for him to start walking. Otherwise, he will um, do this next dialogue while standing completely still. It wastes a lot of time, 
And yes, you can get some bad dialogues that take a little longer, but you'll lose at most about three seconds for even the longest dialogue. So don't worry about it too bad, just don't run forward too quick, basically. Then right here, you're going to want to actually kill the enemies before the uh, quest marker is here, again for experience. And then... Just kind of camp the bottom one. And again, abuse aim assist to to the, your uh, to the best of your abilities because aim assist is just your friend in this category. It really is. You'll be using aim assist so much, especially once you get to infinite ammo and shotguns and all that, because on zero you don't have close enough like Gage would at all. You don't have anything. You have your your you have your mouse, and that's it. So it's really, really vital to be abusing aim assist as much as possible. Um, I'll pull out another zero at the end of the video here. That can probably show off the technique, like what you should be doing late game with infinite ammo, but. Um, I don't know. It's it is the basic. It's the same basic idea as um, animation canceling with the um, with the doll weapon at the start. It's just done ridiculously faster. All right. I walked talk. I excuse me. I talked over exactly what I did there in. Um, Liarsburg, but you do want to rec uh, memorize exactly who spawns where for each of those. And you'll notice I'm still abusing aim assist as much as possible to go fast. I'll sit there, you know, scope in, fire, scope in, fire again. And the faster you can do that, the better. You know. Eventually you can get up to that type of speed. Where you're doing stuff like that, which is kind of what you'd be doing with infinite ammo shotguns, anyways, and that just increases your accuracy, pulls all the uh, pellets closer to closer to target. It removes a lot of randomness with how the game uh, spreads pellets and all that. So it's it's just a vital thing to practice, and the faster you can do it, the better. Just in general, uh, right here, it's pretty standard. Just go talk to Hammerlock. Don't worry about anything. Don't kill any rack. Don't. You don't have to do anything special right now. And the reason I say don't kill any rack is because you do not want to hit level three first. I know Gage will typically kill rack here or after this, you know, but do not hit level three before the graveyard, because you have to do a couple of side quests here at the start so that you can get a sniper. If you hit level three, you lost a lot of time, basically. So you can open these, do whatever, it's your choice. You can even walk away from the keyboard for a couple seconds. It's a speed run. You gotta go fast, right? Once you see the check mark, you can instantly save, quit, you're fine. Blah blah, etc, etc. And here is where it's gonna vary from any percent with DLC. Here is where not having a sniper is going to slow you down by about two minutes. Because believe it or not, Zero and the other three any percent characters can theoretically get to a hammerlock faster than Gage or Creek can. Because of that dialogue skip, you can actually get to hammerlock the first time way, way faster than any other character. And by that I mean the DLC characters. <laughs> um, it's hard though because all you're using is pistols, and they're not very good pistols either. But if you get, if you get a really really good run, you should be able to get to him like a couple seconds faster. Because that 20 seconds really does add up in the end. So now. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be accepting the side quest from Hammerlock here, and there is a minor, maybe a couple frames, time saver right here that you can do. 
it's kind of tricky and you know and any other situation it's bad to do this because claptrap will his dialogue will mess up and take really long but basically what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to accept the side quest right before hammerlock's quest is active like turning in this first quest is active and then you'll accept both at the same time and that'll save just a fraction of a little bit of a second. So if I can get it right here, I'll show it off, but it's not very big. Nah, alright, didn't, didn't get it. But this is what would happen, the Claptrap dialogue doing this right here is what would happen anyways. But it's, it is something you can go for if you really want to. But with this level of bonus, you want to come in, kill, um... Everything in the graveyard here. Drop reloading is your friend. Just kind of DPS them down as quickly as possible, and once you kill them, save quit. Because now we're going to go to the pond, because the side quest is, you know, clearing both of those. So what you can do is come right down to this little hole here, and if you kill them all over and over, then, um... A bunch will spawn there, over and over. And you'll notice I was going a little slower than normal there anyways. But it really doesn't matter. I mean, basically what you're going to do is you'll see it says Escort Claptap to his, his ship here on the, uh, where it says your quest there. And then you're going to want to save quit once that happens and Flint has stopped talking. Because basically what happens is that Claptrap, instead of waiting up top for up here and then walking all the way down the hill, he'll already be down the hill and you won't have to worry about him. And that's why that saves time, because it would you would have to kill everything about five seconds fast for it to be not worth it. You'd have to sit there and listen to Flint talk for about five seconds before it would become not worthwhile to do that strat. So, keep that in mind when you're doing the pawn there. So then once you get up here, just turn this one in, grab both of the quests, it doesn't really matter. Just go fast, come in here, buy some ammo, buy some nades, make sure you do buy the nades. And then you'll have this assault rifle here. You don't really need the assault rifle, but it can be nice if you're, uh, if you're hurting for everything. The reason you grab both quests is because you need the bad fur day so you can get a sniper as well. I definitely do like holding on to the assault rifle though. It is very nice. In certain situations, I won't I'll just drop reload through it like that or whatever. Make sure you hit every trigger for claptrap down here. You can start the fight a little early here. If you want. Blow that up. Did not really do much for me. Oops. Oops, that was a little sloppy, but whatever. You get the idea, just kinda... At this point, it's just killing everything faster than... as fast as you can, using the tools you have. So it's it's up to you to really decide what's most comfortable for you, and what routines you want to get into to try to prevent RNG. Know what enemies spawn where, watch your mini-map, blah blah blah, etc, etc. You know, typical stuff. Use these barrels to your advantage, if at all possible. And don't be afraid to run up and actually fight them on zero. Because, you know, being too far away and then missing can be a problem. And once you've killed all these guys, just check your nades up here. With any luck, you'll kill them all with your nades like that, but you know, sometimes it doesn't really work out for you. So just kind of hope and pray that you kill them all. There's not much else to that. Um, I should probably clarify. Yeah, basically just get across this bridge as fast as possible. Don't die to the suicide psychos, but I mean, if you, it's normal mode, you probably won't die to them. They're pretty easy. And then you're gonna want to be using your pistol at the start of this boss fight here, because this fight is has a few nuances that really can speed it up quite a bit. 
One of which is killing Little Boom as fast as possible so that Big Boom goes even cleaner. So basically, just crit Little Boom as much as possible in the head. Grab a nade mod and just start chucking. Because that's pretty much the fastest way I've found to be able to kill him. So just pistol during these phases. And then use your uh, grenade mod otherwise. Rather than getting the dialogue skip here. And you don't have to worry about your uh, experience requirements too bad right there. So you can pretty much just kill the psychos. So you've hit the gate, you can exit, take off your nade mod, I like to spec into my action skill right now, and then, I mean, if, if you don't like to use your assault rifle at all, it will help to take it off now, since you've already got your menu open, because this will also put the sniper into your inventory later, directly, and you won't have to menu for it. But right now, <clears throat> it's just off to kill some bully bongs, pretty much. So what I like to do is do a nade jump into my action skill and then get a really strong melee strike or something similar here. It's good luck to get uh, Monolith right there. It doesn't always happen. But when you do get them, it is definitely nice. Grab your four and save quit from there. And this kind of concludes where the routes differ, at least at the early game, between Zero and Gage. Because now you can just get the sniper right here, and I actually got a pretty good one there. That is not bad, actually. That is Doll Grip, Hyperion Stock, Fire Rate Accessory, Jacob's Scope, and Jacob's Barrel. Which means that it's going to be relatively stable, actually, and the fire rate's going to be really good for a muckamuck. But you're still going to have a lot of kickback, and it's... I mean, other than that, that's really good. But sniper parts are very important to you as well, because it'll let you know exactly how good or bad you you got trolled by the game. Um, but, um, yeah, basically from there, it's just kind of doing the normal stuff. You do your crit merging... Like you would with Gage right there, and then you just go kill Boom Boom. Um, let's see what else from here. Um, on the way to your farms, since you don't have Death Trap or anything like that, what you're going to want to be able to do is... Um, do some grenade jumps like this. And then shoot the gas tank. And what I like to do is use Deception and then one shot one guy at the very end because that kind of clears most of that camp and gives you a bunch of extra experience on the way but outside of that really and truly once the only big difference that you have left is how much you can save quit and how much you have to farm extra because right after warden is where you have to switch from the normal route of just killing everything and then or just doing the main quest is what I meant to say, excuse me. And then going and doing the big farming section where you kill a bunch of mutated badass varkids from the Hammerlock quest. So that is the big difference in routing there. You go from about level 11 to level 13. 13 is where you stop killing those varkids. Um, I could show basically what you do there, but it's pretty easy. You wait for them to pot up, and then you shoot them until they die. <laughs> there's there's really not a whole lot to it. If you don't get enough, you save quit and do it again. And then when you hit 13, you go to Tina. Because it's all in the Thunder Express, so it's really, really localized. Um, other than that, I guess I'll try and show you kind of the basic idea of what to do once you have... Um, an infinite ammo Jacob shotgun. Hopefully I have one in here. I may or may not. Um, 
I do. Okay. Good, good, good. So basically, you do your Infranemo stuff. Got it. Blah, blah, blah. You do your merging as well. Blah, blah, blah. But basically, if you notice while I'm shooting, the accuracy is kind of bad and the pellets are going all over the place. And you've got a lot of kickback and recoil and all that. It's it's kind of rough if you're running zero. So basically, scoping in is very important because if you notice, the pellet spread is much, much tighter with that. And you can improve that even more by doing that animation canceling type thing. So you zoom in enough that the game is counts itself as zoomed in, which improves your accuracy by quite a bit. And then you shoot. And really done, done really, really quickly, it looks like this. So you can basically just mash the two together. And be able to really aim in on your targets. So that's the basic idea you're going for with that. Once you actually get to infinite ammo and all that sort of, uh, sort of stuff. Um, from there, my other hints are just use deception as much as possible. And in the best situations as possible because it's your survivability, it's your damage, it's, it's everything for you. The biggest issue you're going to run into as a zero runner though is that you're not going to have very much health. That's the... That's the big thing. You're going to always be health gated and you're going to go down a lot and die a lot. I guess one little thing that I can show off is animation canceling your um, deception because if you are scoped in and use deception, you don't get the long drawn out animation for it. So that's another thing you can do if you really need to be invisible right now is you just, let's just say you're in a very tight situation, you see some enemy coming up, you can just quickly scope in, hit your action scope button, and you're instantly invisible. So that would be another very important trick for you. That would be a very good thing to practice. But other than that, there's really not a lot of difference in how you would run zero. Just any time that you would really want to make it back to a fast travel instead of anything else, you know, save, quit, you know, Bloodwings area, you're, you're gonna want to just save quit out of that arena once you get the, uh, the collar. Um, I mean, really, there's not a whole lot different between the routes outside of the farming in the early game there. And that went over pretty much all the tech that you need, so... Here's a nice little tips and tricks video that should be, should be very useful for you if you're looking into getting into the much harder much less popular any percent categories that are available, especially if you're going after the weaker characters of Salvador, Maya, and Axton. So that's that's about it for today, folks. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot.